Here's a lit- oh, one second. Okay, that's better. Here's a litmus test for everyone. When you look at this, what do you see? Is it a modern interpretation of American muscle? Maybe a cheap cash-in on a 60-year-old name. Or, perhaps something different. A little of the old, a lot of the new. Whatever you may think of the Buffalo, it's not a muscle car. Or this. Except maybe this one. After decades of approving rebadged Malay's luxury cars and Japanese sports cars, the Shyster Corporation finally caved Bravado's pleas for a Buffalo with its own identity. Something that paid homage to its ancestral roots while also replacing that aging Ferrochi. There were ambitious concepts. In the end, the design team decided on something totally unexpected. A rebadged luxury car. The PMP 600, to be exact. In fairness, though, who could blame them for taking a car that already printed money and adapting it for the gap in Bravado's fleet? Ironically enough, the PMP nameplate was already a callback to Shyster's glory days. This meant that the Buffalo was a product of radical change in modern automotive design. The Renaissance in the mid-2000s shed its melted cheese aesthetic for the bold lines of nostalgia. Vapid might have been the first ones to successfully capitalize on this misnomer of retrofuturism, but the competition wasn't far behind. Unlike the Dominator, the 5.0 and the Feds bought up these things in mass. Yet there are enough aggressive drivers out there to balance out those preconceptions. The Buffalo tailgating you could either be a cop having a bad day, or someone in their testosterone compensating midlife power fantasy. Or both. God help you. At the end of the day, the Buffalo isn't the four-door car on the road you need to look out for. The ones driving these are at least passionate about what they drive and the condition they arrive in. But as the Buffalo concept rolled out onto the stage for the press to devour, the earth shook. Hordes of outraged baby boomers began muttering incoherently about four doors as they collectively threw off their reading glasses in disgust. A Buffalo with more than two doors? The horror. Luckily, Bravado was able to quell America's angriest generation with the revival of the Gauntlet just a few years later. Purists will forever grovel at the thought of a muscle car with an extra set of doors, as their imaginary goalpost for what makes a car muscly remains unsatisfied. While they sit there in their folding lawn chair at a local car show, bragging about how their Tampa was the 409th car in toddler Von the Green, made in a third Tuesday with a trouser-stained brown interior, they'll never be able to tell you what a muscle car truly is. At least not without the guy next to them in the fishing hat with the blade, yelling something else. The purists can't agree on anything. Sixty years later, and the verdict is still out on whether this is a muscle car or a pony car, Depending on whom you ask, this is either a monstrous British sports car or an American muscle icon. They can't even settle on if this is any less muscly than this. Nor can they agree on what this is because they haven't quite figured out when the era started or ended, or if it's even still going. Confused yet? Good, now you're getting it. Just because something has a little extra carrying capacity doesn't make it any less of a muscle car than its two-door cousin. This isn't even American, and it still qualifies. Yes, I know it's a diesel, but the point still remains. Do you know what doesn't qualify as a muscle car? These. Okay, so if we're gonna overlook the fact that the Buffalo has four doors and it wasn't produced in America, what makes these things just sedans? Your Honor, I present the smoking gun. That's right, the Buffaloes you see before you are four cylinders. It hurts, I know but perhaps I've misled you a little bit. See, there are examples of buffaloes of proper V8s out there. Take the STX, for example. Twice the cylinders as the S, and quadruple the fun. Yet the most popular models you'll see often in LS traffic are fakes. Nevertheless, if there was ever a car to have your midlife crisis in, it would be this. The buffalo's aggressive styling leads its charge with a sneer of cold command. Then they decided to give it hideous skirts to cut down an FIB impersonation. The driving experience behind a stock buffalo isn't very noteworthy. In fact, it's a bit of a dog. It's bulky, slow, and doesn't offer much in the handling department. But things could be worse. What you lose in raw performance, you make up for an aesthetic. The buffalo is a difficult one. The moniker has transformed quite a bit over its roughly 60-year lifespan. The transition from two-door to four-door was grating, 
yet it serves as the foundation for what the buffalo would become. The buffalo of today challenges muscle car purists right where they can't bear to admit it. If it's obnoxiously fun and has a V8 to boot, it's a muscle car in my book. Long live the four doors.